Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay. And again, we're having this, I know it was announced, we're having the Engage Conference. I want you to invite people. Okay. It's going to be, it's going to be um, powerful. It's going to be transformational. Amen. Amen. We haven't had any conference for a while. So we're kicking off a series of conferences. So this is, this is the first that we're having. And um, so, uh, yeah, I just want to, I want you to mark your calendars and begin to prepare people. Hallelujah. Your friends, invite them, your family, everyone. We want to have a space problem here during the Engage pro, uh, conference. Okay? Yes. Are you going to do that? Yes. Okay. I trust you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you. We thank you. We bless your name that we can come before you. Feed upon your word. Your word. My goodness, the bread of life, the word that brings life, the word that brings light, it brings understanding to the simple. I yield myself, I ask you speak through this lips of clay this morning. And Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you be glorified. We will be edified and the enemy will be terrified. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I give you glory. I give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So last week we were looking at wisdom for souls. Okay, the wisdom for souls. And it's important for us to begin to see souls, see the true value, okay, of souls. It's important for us to begin to, 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 begin to see souls the way God sees them. And even you, even your soul, you need to know the value of your soul. Are you following me? Yeah, you need to know the value of your soul. Your soul is important. Many people don't know the value of their souls. And that is why people don't mind. Some people don't mind gaining the whole world and losing their souls. The reason is because they don't know the value of the, the soul. They don't know the value of their souls. 
Many people, and I know some due to oppression, depression, whatever, many people take their lives because they don't know the value of the soul. They don't know. Because if they knew, they would take care of it. They would cherish it. They would cherish it. Like we were saying last week, that the whole, um, the treasures, all the riches in this world are not enough to pay for a soul. That's why no one can buy salvation. Do you understand? Imagine if salvation had a price for man to pay. Then poor people will never get saved. Am I correct? Yeah. Because if salvation costs some billions, how many people here can think about that? But there's nothing on earth that can be commensurate to the value of a soul. Nothing. So, even if you put all the wealth of the world together in one place, it's still less than the value of a soul. It's still less than the value of a soul. It doesn't matter how many trillions it's not enough to pay for a soul. It's not enough. If there were anything else on earth to pay for a soul, don't you think God would have used it to pay for man? Think about that. God would have used it. So make no mistake. You're precious. I don't care what anybody tells you. You are precious. I don't care what you have imagined. I don't care what you have believed. Till now, I want you to know that you are precious. Amen. You are precious before the Lord. Amen. Amen. You might not feel precious, but it has nothing to do with your feelings. And the person you see next to you you might not think they're precious, but I'm telling you, more valuable than the whole earth. More valuable than the whole earth. And so, when you begin to look at a soul like that, then you now begin to understand why God would go, will give his best to pay for a soul. So if you want to know the value of a thing, you can tell the value of a thing by the price that is paid for it. Am I correct? Amen. Yeah. You, 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 you can't walk into macro and just, just look at something and you tell them, look, they put the price tag there. 
They put a price tag. You can't just go there and tell them, this is what I have. Can I take it? You will be arrested if you try to take it. You have to pay the exact value before they allow you to take it. So, that is the same with a soul. God could not just save man. Because Adam sold humanity cheaply for a fruit. Imagine that. For a fruit, he sold our souls. That's the danger of lack of knowledge and lack of understanding. When you don't know the value of a thing, you will sell it cheaply. You will sell it cheaply. That's why the people that steal equipment, that, you know, some of them, they stole some of our stuff. You know that when they steal those things, they sell them cheaply. Why? They don't know the value. They don't know the value. They don't know the value. So many people are living their lives like that without knowing the value of the life that God has given to them. They don't know. They don't know. And because they don't know, they make foolish decisions. For things that mean nothing when it comes to the value of the soul. So, I'm telling you <clears throat> that we need an awakening. We need an awareness <laughs> of the value of the soul. Amen? Amen. Amen? If you don't know it, you will misuse it. You will just discard it. You will just waste it. You will waste it. But if you know the value of your soul, you will guard it with your whole life. You will guard it with everything. So it's important for us to know generally the value of a soul. In Genesis 1, 26, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Amen? Amen. You see that? Let us make man in our image. According to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. The, let, in fact, the, the, just the first part. Let us make man in our image. Okay? According to our likeness. From there you can derive the value of a soul. Are you following me? Yeah, you can derive the value of a soul from there. Why? Made in the image and likeness of God. So you cannot use anything else to quantify the value of a soul you need to use God to quantify the value of a soul. You get my point? Yeah, because it, let us make man 
in our image. In other words, let us make someone like us. So the value cannot be used, cannot be determined by anything else. If you want to determine the value, then try to value God. If you can value God, then you can value a soul. But if you cannot value God, then you cannot value a soul. Are you following me? Yes. That is why to pay for man, God had to come. Yeah, that's it. God had to come down. But then it was tricky because God cannot die. So God has to become man. Perfect. To pay for a soul. So it's not about it's not about money. It's not about um, gold. It's not about diamond. I mean, to tell you how valuable gold is in heaven, that's what they used to tar the road. That's what we walk on in heaven. That's the value. Walking, trampling over it all the time. That's the value of gold. That's the true value of gold. <laughs> But on earth, oh my goodness, <laughs> people are killing for gold, okay? They are wasting souls for something less valuable. Can, can, can you see, can you see the, the foolishness of man? And that's why even in our society today, People will kill for a car. They will kill even for a cell phone. What does that tell you? There is a lack of knowledge of the value of a soul. There's no item on earth that is commensurate to a soul. You need to know this so that you value what you have. Treasure it. Amen? Amen? Otherwise, when the devil comes to tempt you and you don't know the value of your soul, you give in to that temptation. Why? Because you don't know the value of your soul. That's what happened to Adam. He didn't know the value value of his soul. Well, <laughs> I suspect that he didn't know because I don't understand if he knew he would not do what he did. Amen? Amen. But God is loving. God is faithful. And God decided hmm, to To redeem man. But then he had to send Jesus to pay for a soul. That's why if you are the only one on earth, Jesus would have still come. Do you understand? If you were the only human being on earth, you are worth the sacrifice. You're worth the sacrifice. So don't undermine who you are. Don't allow the worldly um, thinking, worldly understanding to deceive you into undermining who you are. Are you following? Yes. It's important. The world has all kinds of 
frivolous things that they use to place value. It's all a lie. But, but God, if you want the truth, you need to go into this. The word of God gives you the true value of a thing. So that's why a rich man is not more valuable than a poor man. Do you get my point? Yeah, that's why it, 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 it's not. So don't worship rich men. They're just men who have money. That's all. But the, 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 the etern- when it comes to eternity, that has nothing to do with the valuation of a soul. You must use the right metrics to determine the value, otherwise you'll be deceived. A person's car has nothing to do with their value. A person's looks have nothing to do with their value. But we're deceived. We're deceived into misplacing the value. (laughs) Don't. Now, obviously, if you have those things, good things of life, it makes life comfortable. That's all. But it doesn't increase the value of the soul. So, don't waste your life. Don't undermine your life. Don't devalue your life. And then in the same way, Don't undermine anybody because of their status or lack of status. Don't. King Charles is not of more value than you. It's not. Hallelujah. He's made in God's image according to his likeness just like you are made in God's image according to his likeness. There's no first class human and second class human. There's nothing like that. Now, the world tries to sell that lie to us and we buy into it. And then we wonder why our lives are so confused. And we wonder why we get depressed when we look at. When we look at other people, when we look at social media, or you look at the magazines, or you look at Hollywood, then you get confused and you think you are nothing. Meanwhile, God made you. And when he looks at you, he sees himself. You see? (laughs) And that is why We need to win souls. Knowing fully well that any soul without Jesus is lost. It's lost. No matter how good they are. (laughs) Amen? No matter how good they are. So when you understand the value and you see that this value, this soul is so valuable, but then the enemy wants to keep this soul for himself. And then God has given us the word. He has given us his Holy Spirit. And he has also given us a commission that we need to do something about it. Okay? So you value yourself, but then you need to value that person as well. See the proper value of a soul that does not know Jesus. It's still valuable to God. Jesus still weeps today for people who are in hell. He still weeps for them. Why? Because of the value. 
It's a loss to the kingdom of God. So, we need to begin to um, take this seriously. My goodness. I want to show you a scripture in Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. This is speaking about Lucifer. Okay. Um, there's, a, there's a part I want to read. It says, okay. The word of the Lord came to me again saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, Thus says the Lord, because your heart is lifted up and because you say, I am a God and I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yet you are a man and not a God. Though you set your heart as the heart of a God, behold, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and your understanding, you have gained riches for yourself and gathered gold and silver into your treasuries by your great wisdom in trade and have increased your riches and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Now, there is what is known as the law of double reference. Okay? The law of double reference in biblical interpretation, it's a law that um, you see that a particular person is being addressed, but then there is another person. There is another entity. So God can be speaking to one person by speaking to more than one, one person. Okay? A good example of that is in Genesis chapter, uh, in Genesis chapter 3, verse, uh, is it verse 15, where God was speaking to the serpent. Yes? God says to the serpent, he says, he says, you are cursed above all, you are cursed above all beasts. He says, you are going to crawl on your belly. Okay? And then he says, I have put enmity between you and the woman. Between her seed and your seed. And he says, the seed of the woman is going to bruise your head. But you will bruise his heel. Okay? So, the seed of the woman is going to bruise your head. You will bruise his heel. Now, there was a literal serpent. A physical creature that God spoke to directly. But as he was speaking to the serpent, he was also speaking to the spirit behind the serpent. The spirit that possessed the serpent. So God was using the law of double reference there. Okay? So that's the law of double reference. The law of double reference. So here, when you read Ezekiel 28, there is a law of double reference that is being applied here. There was actually, there was actually a king of Tyre. Historically, there was a king of Tyre. But when God was speaking, he was not just speaking to the physical king. There is a spirit that possessed that king. And God was also addressing that spirit. That's why you will know that when you read later in the, in your, as you read down the chapter, you'll get to a point where he begins to make reference to things that the king would not have been privy to. So he's addressing another entity. Look at, look at what he says in, let, let, let's skip. Let's skip to verse 12, uh, 11. Look at that. Lamentation for the king of Tyre. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation 
for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. That is not the physical king of Tyre. Amen? Yes. It says you were in Eden, the garden of God. Obviously, the king of Tyre was not in Eden. You see, so God is speaking, but he has switched. And he is addressing a personality, a, a spiritual person. And we know who that is. He was in the garden. Yes, he was there and deceived Eve. He was in Eden. He is the one that was the seal of perfection. That's what made him proud. He was the seed of perfection. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the burial, the onyx, the jasper, sapphire, turquoise, emerald, with gold, the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you in the day you were created. All these, all of the intricate and precious things were used to create Lucifer. Well, I mean, I've never seen Lucifer, but some people that have, that have had the privilege of seeing him say he's quite... A, a beautiful creature. Yeah. It's not the fork and the, this thing that they, they tell you. <laughs> no. It's not that. You see. So when you read down verse 14, it says, You were the anointed cherub who covers I establish you, and you were on the holy mountain of God. You walk back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. Let's read that in the NIV. Let's read verse 14 in the NIV and see how the NIV puts it. Hmm. It says, you were anointed as a guardian cherub. For so I ordained you, and you were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. So this was definitely not the physical king of Tyre. Are you getting my point? Yes. So I'm, 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 I'm reading this just to show you who we are. Um, I just want to show you something about this, uh, this Lucifer. Let's go back to verse, let's go back to, there's a place where it talks about his merchandise. Um, okay, all right, let's read, let's read, let's read um, verse 16. Okay, it says, by the abundance of your trading, Okay, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as pro a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. So, he is he's good at trading. That's just the point I want to make, I want to emphasize. He's good at trading, okay? Abundance of your trading. Then if you go to verse 18, skip to verse 18, you see, you defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Okay? Therefore, I brought fire from your midst and I devoured you. So the fire that God used to devour him was from within him. That's what's going to use to destroy him. The fire is inside him. But the point is that he is good at trading. And what kind of trading do you think he's busy with today? Souls. Souls. 
He's not on the JSC trading or the New York Stock Exchange. No, that's not what he's talking about. That is of no significance to him, except it would lead him to souls. I said he will lead him to souls because he knows that that's the true wealth. The true wealth on the earth is the souls. So he is an expert in trading for souls. And if you don't know the value of your soul, you will sell your soul for something inferior. (laughs) You get? (laughs) Yeah. That's why he will say, If you do this, I'll give you this. He's trading. He's trading. I'm telling you. He's been doing it for long. Trading. Why? Because he knows the value. He knows the value of your soul. But you don't know the value of your soul. So he comes with a deal. That is flashy. That looks impressive. But your soul is more. Your soul is more. Far greater value. Your soul. There's nothing. Jesus said, what Shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? Is that any profit? That's a loss. That is not profit. That is a loss. Make no mistake. The value of your soul. That God will not weep for gold. Do you understand? No, he won't weep for gold. God will not weep for platinum. He will not weep for California. He will not weep for any of these things. But he would weep for a soul. Why? The prophet. So that's why when you win souls, that's why the Bible says, he that wins souls is wise. Why? Because you are trading. You are trading wisely when you win souls. You see, you're being wise because you know the value. You know the value. So that's why when you win a soul, you are enriching your life. Okay. (laughs) You are enriching your life when you win a soul. You need to, I I just want you to see it clearly. Every single soul you win, you add to your life great wealth. Great wealth. That scripture in Daniel, we looked at that last week, Daniel. Um, chapter 12, I think. See, Daniel 12, 3. Let's see. <clears throat> are you getting, are you learning something? Is this blessing you? Yes. 
Look at what it says. Daniel 12.3 Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. So you see, when you take a soul that is going astray and you help him to come back on track, it now adds to your life the kind of radiance that the star has. So that's what it adds to your life. Isn't that amazing? And it is for eternity, forever and ever. It's not a temporary situation. It's an eternal situation. Those who turn many to righteousness. And that's why discipleship is important. Because through discipleship, you are helping people to come back. And to not only receive Jesus, but to continue. That adds to you. It's souls. You're trading. How many people love to trade now? <laughs> yes. You need to take it serious. Trading. So, the enemy, Satan, knows the value of a soul. So, he goes and he trades. He tries to strike deals. He tried it with Jesus. You remember when he said to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, uh, no, in Luke chapter 4, when he said to Jesus, he, he took him up, the Bible says, and showed him the glories. Let's turn there. Luke chapter 4, when Jesus was being tempted, you see one of the temptations of Jesus. Satan was trying to trade. Ah, yes. He says in verse, in verse, um, where, where is it? Okay. From verse 5. Let's read from verse 5. Yeah. The devil taking him up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. So how did Jesus, how did, how did Satan do that? He gave him a vision. Okay. He gave him a vision, time vision. He, he took him in the spirit and time traveled, okay, from, I don't know from what time, but till showed him, he took him up on a mount, a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world. That means from the beginning to the end. Showed him even our dispensation. Showed him and said, all of this. Let's read the next verse. Showed him in the moment of time. And the, and the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory. Notice that. Underline that word, glory. And their glory is important. For this has been delivered to me and I will give it to whomever I wish. And their glory. When you read the book of Genesis, Joseph tells his brothers, go and tell my father of my glory in Egypt. So he has been elevated to a point, to the apex of all achievement in his life. So he called that his glory. He says, go and tell my father. So Satan was, trying, was showing Jesus 
the glory of all kingdoms. He says, I'm going to give this all the glory of all the kingdoms. But just one thing. Verse, verse 7. Look at. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. He's trying to trade. He's trading here. Can you see? He's trading. So he says, if, if, if you just bow and worship me, all this thing that Adam gave me, I'll give it to you. You have the wealth, you have the power, you have, you have everything. The position, you have all, all the nations. You have everything. But just give me your soul. That's what it is. But you know that today, people are falling for this. They're not even offered all of this. Just a fraction they're offered and they are bowing. They are bowing. Because they don't know the value of their souls. They don't know the value of their souls. So that's why in Proverbs 11 verse 30, it says, He that winneth souls is wise. It is wise. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. It is wise to win souls. It is wise to turn people to righteousness. Yeah, it's wise. Otherwise, you just live your life, just walk, eat, sleep, and play. You know, and then you make money. But then you've not added to your life any eternal wealth. So when you die, you just go to heaven and, you know, you're worshiping and you're seeing Jesus' face, enjoying the beauties and the glories of, glories of heaven. But then you don't have wealth. Because you didn't invest in souls. You see? Turn to someone and say, this soul business is real business. It is serious business. Yeah. It is serious business. So I want us to take the business of soul serious. Okay? Every week they tell you, you know, how, I, I don't even remember how Caroline puts it. If you please be kind to invite, bring, however she says it, to invite people. Why? So that they can be put on the path of righteousness. That's why we ask you to invite people. That's why we ask you to reach out. So it will enrich your life. You're not doing a favor for the church when you do that. Did you know? It's a favor for yourself. Because you are trading. And when you trade, you become a master at trading for souls. You, 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 you become a master at winning, catching men. Oh my goodness. That's why the disciples of Jesus, when you go to the new Jerusalem today, the foundations, you see Peter there, you see John there. James and all those guys. Why? How? Those are eternal positions that nobody can take away from them. Why? Because they forsook everything. They followed him and they caught men. They were wiser. They made wise choices. Wise choices. Anything you can do. That's why if you have money, use that money for souls. I told you last week, use it. Buy coffee for somebody. Tell him about Jesus. Pay his transport to church. It is an investment. You are trading for souls. When you do things like that. 
make it easy for them to come to Christ. Amen. If you need to burn some fuel to go pick them up. If you need to wake up earlier to go fetch them, do it. You are trading. Souls. So you become wise when you do things like that. Amen. Receive wisdom. In your trading, your trading business. Hallelujah. Your father's business. It says, I must be about my father's business. His fa your father's business is souls. It's a business of souls. Let's get into it. Hallelujah. Shake off whatever the enemy has placed over you. And then begin to see the value of a soul. Start going for it. Start praying for them. Start taking steps to help them, rescue them, so that the enemy does not have those souls. We're going to be bread now. Father, we thank you.